I am a big fan of ball pups and I've shot quite a few now um, like the FX Wildcat and the Puncher Breaker um, the Hatsan Gladius and I've got to say guys what I've got in my hands right now is my favourite one so far to date as in September 2016 guys I bring you the Air Arms Galahad hi guys this is Rack and Load and this thing is my favourite ball pup right now it is absolutely superb superb <laughs> I am just in love with this thing I really do not want to give it back it is that good right let's give you some specs straight away then um, before we go into this rack and load review and uh, let me just uh, tell you I'll just kind of stress it as well um, if you've just joined us on this channel uh, first of all welcome um, this is where you'll find proper unbiased reviews this is not an advert or a commercial for air arms a lot of videos out there seem to do they're all, they call them reviews but they seem like adverts it's like the uh, manufacturers paying them to do you know to do a review which is more like an advert this is a review so good points about this gun bad points about this gun don't really care if I up, upset air arms I'm going to tell you how it is so just wanted to put that out there guys anyway full specs then this is the rifle version you can get a carbine version I'll uh, give you the specs then on the actual rifle version uh, first weighing in at 3.7 kilos overall length is 790 millimeters barrel length is 493 millimeters the carbine version obviously being a carbine is a little bit shorter a little bit lighter weighing in at 3.6 kilos overall length is 698 millimeters with a barrel length of 395 millimeters so a little bit shorter a um, little bit lighter but this is the rifle version uh, you can get different stocks uh, get them uh, beach stocks uh, I think you get laminate stocks and you get them in walnut as well this is the soft touch uh, synthetic obviously as you can see um, and what a cracking bit of kit this is so let's get stuck in then <clears throat> I'm losing my voice already right then ignore the scope but I will tell you what it is wearing a little bit big actually especially with that sunshade on but it's just a hawk sidewinder uh, that I threw on it but this is the Air Arms Galahad okay fully synthetic as you can see and one of the most ambidextrous ambidextrous ball pups I've shot now the interesting thing about this thing is about this rifle about this thing about this rifle ball pup whatever you want to call it um, is the cocking lever which is that thing right there okay so you've got nothing um, sort of up here you know like a lever or anything either side it's here right and to cock this thing well I'm going to show you about cocking it in a minute we need to we need to do this in a normal rack and load styly video styly? I don't know what's up with me today I think I've been listening to too much uh, crappy music on the radio <laughs> right then so taking it from the recoil pad butt pad end um, nice sort of soft rubber um, on the recoil pad butt pad whatever you want to call it got Air Arms it's logo there this is adjustable um, this uh, butt pad is and it can actually be angled so angled sort of that way that way um, you know depending on your build depending on your style of shooting um, that can be adjusted um, obviously it will go up and down as well so it can be adjusted for that length of pull um, you can get spacers for it uh, didn't see any in the box but uh, maybe they're optional extras that you can get for this uh, ball pup but yeah you can adjust the length of pull for me uh, I'm an average sort of uh, built uh, fella uh, this was fine straight out of the box it fit me pretty pretty well 
But um, the stock itself, uh, moving on from the actual butt pad, is like a soft touch uh, synthetic. Really nice, real nice lines on this thing. And what I do like about it, the cheek piece, and this is sort of jumping into um, the actual uh, ergonomics of this uh, this ball pop. When I say it's ambidextrous, a lot of ball pops that I've shot are claimed to be ambidextrous, but the magazine um, sort of well is uh, a bit further back here. So if we can sort of show you, so you you be able to see it a bit better like this. The mag well or loading area for the mag is a bit further back on like the one side of the rifle, whichever side it is, generally on the uh, right hand side. So if you're a lefty like me, when you come to sort of uh, put your cheek on this, you've got, you're sort of interrupted with uh, where the magazine goes, which is a bit of a pain. And also, in some cases, there'll be a cocking lever here. But air arms seem to have move this quite a way forward so right-handed shooters obviously you've got room there for your cheek left-handed shooters uh, you know you've you've got quite a bit I've probably got that the opposite way around no left-handed shooters you seem to have the a comfier side being a left-handed shooter I don't know it's have they done that on purpose I don't know but it either way it doesn't interfere with your, your cheek weld because it's been moved forward so that is a real, real uh, nice feature on this rifle. Probably a feature that is, oh, I wouldn't call it a feature, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's overlooked on a lot of rifles, I think. And you only sort of find that out when you're a lefty. You know, when you put your cheek on something and you're like, oh, I've got a magazine stuck in my cheek or a cocking lever stuck in my cheek. With the Air Arms Galahad, no, no problem there. No problem there. I should have just said that in a sentence really, shouldn't I, rather than waffling on. But this is the interesting bit, um, is the cocking lever. We may as well jump into the cocking lever. Fully ambidextrous, so you see it on that side, but you can swap it around and bang it on that side. And with it being this far forward, and check this out, this is the good bit, this is the real good bit. To cock it, there's none of this pulling out to the side or anything. You push it all the way forward, click, and back, and that is it. That is the rifle cocked. How cool is that? So basically, when you're shooting, you, you haven't got to take your pistol hand, or your trigger hand, sorry, uh, away from the rifle. You haven't even got to lift your head off the cheek piece, or take your eye off the ball, so to speak. You can literally just use your fore, fore end hand, to just cock the rifle, be your left or right handed. That is brilliant. And it is super, super smooth to cock as well. It is just really good. That's the actual cocking uh, sequence there. And obviously it cycles the magazine. And that is it. That easy. Really good. No sort of fiddly handle to sort of get a grip on. This thing will be perfect in winter, you know, when you're wearing gloves. If you're out in the field with this thing and like I said you can swap it to the other side so if you're a lefty you can have it this side to be honest I didn't swap it I I don't know I just seem to get on with it um, with it being on that side uh, I should have really swapped it out but where I was shooting it was better for uh, for the camera having it on this side um, especially when I was at the range but to be honest I should have but I didn't but but it is swappable, simply, you know, just a case of undoing that and then banging it on that side. But uh, that is a real cool feature on this rifle, making it fully ambidextrous in every sense of the word. Now, the magazines you might recognise if you uh, shoot air arms rifles. Yep, it's pretty much the usual Air Arms uh, cassette style magazine, uh, straight out of the S410 or the S510. And while I mentioned both of those rifles, the Galahad pretty much has the same power plant as the S410 and the S510, but in a ballpark configuration. But 
for those of you that haven't seen the magazines, cassette style magazines, yeah, I don't generally like them, especially the clockwork ones that you've got to wind up and you need a, like a PhD to figure out how to load. Uh, these ones simply drop the pellet in, crank it around, drop the other pellet in, crank it around, piece of cake, and then just simply, I'll show you how to load it, cock that lever all the way forward, and then the magazine just, let's lift it up so you can see, just slides in like that, job done. And it's pretty subtle in there as well. Really nice. To get it out, just pull it like that. But that's your magazine. Clicks in there nicely, no problem. Love that, love that. Let's just uh, pull it all the way back. So, love the magazines, no problem with the magazines. Um, dead e easy to load. Might be a little bit more fiddly with the uh, 177 version, uh, but this is 2.2, easy enough. I was uh, having no problem loading these up with the uh, RWS, RWS Super Domes. And that brings us nicely to accuracy. <laughs> right then, this is generally where I embarrass myself. But with this rifle, uh, it's pretty, pretty well done me, uh, done me proud. Right, first of all, I'll show you this one. Now this is at 30 yards uh, on my little test range. RWS Super Domes. Um, yeah, that one opened up a little bit. Yeah, I think that was me, but pretty much one old groups. Okay, 30 yards, no wind, RWS Super Domes. Uh, another, another one there. Yeah, baby, happy with that one. Yep. Mm. And then, these are three shot groups, by the way, and then I've got uh, five shot groups here. Uh, yeah, opened up a little bit. Mm, that's me, not the rifle. Oh, I'm happy with that one. There it is. Yep. So accuracy wise, pretty damn good. Um, I've literally got back from the range and chucked this thing straight on the table to do this review. And I had this stretched out to, I think it was 60 yards. Um, just shooting a six inch steel gong, no problem. Pretty much slotting it. Um, every time when you know i got my eye in so to speak um but yeah accuracy wise not a problem 177 version probably will obviously reach out a little bit further you know and be a bit more consistent and fly a bit more straighter um but this no problem um i would happily take this thing out into the field no problem whatsoever just a real real lovely rifle I, oh. I don't want to give it back. I don't want to give it back. Right then, so let's carry on talking about this while I'm sort of just going sort of off on tangents. Back to the stock, the pistol grip, obviously it's the thumb hole uh, configuration. Uh, you've got uh, Air Arms' is a logo there, and you've got some nice, uh, quite sharp checkering uh, on the um, pistol grip there. So that's nice. And then moving along to the fore end, loads of checker in there and grip. Really nice, very comfortable. And then up front here on the fore end is a rail where you can attach bipod, which I really do think you'll want on this rifle. Um, so yeah, plenty of room there to bang on bipod and then we'll talk about the cylinder while we're here um, all right then one of my pet hates you know that by now guys if you're uh, sort of tuned in and subscribed to the channel uh, not a big fan of uh, gauges right on the end of rifles where you've got to look literally look down the muzzle to see how much air you've got in but I do appreciate that in some cases the way they build these rifles there's no other place to put them but nice it would have been absolutely perfect if they'd banged it underneath here or on the side or something but anyway your filler area is here just pull this sort of dust cover 
forward and that sort of uh, gives you your dust cover. It gives you your filler area even. So that's pretty cool. And then you have uh, got a thread here if you want to. This was a little bit noisy to be fair. Um, this rifle is. Um, so you've got a, a thread here where you can uh, throw on a moderator should you need it. So that is cool. Gives you options. We do like options. That is metal by the way. Uh, aluminium. Uh, focus. So that is that is pretty cool. Um, keeps everything nice and clean there. Protects that thread. So that is pretty damn cool. Now it is obviously a shrouded barrel, uh, free floating, or at least it was free floating. And I don't know why they say that the barrel is free floating on some rifles, and then they put a band on, which totally eliminates the free floatingness, if that's a word. Um, yeah, I know you've, they've probably got to have that, but it sort of takes away the free floating um, ness of the rifle, but. Hey ho, this thing is accurate anyway, it doesn't really affect it. And I know some people will sort of say, oh, free floating barrel on an air rifle, does it make any difference? Yeah, I think it does. Um, you know, it does eliminate um, sort of vibration and all manner of different sort of aspects when you're shooting. Um, but yeah, I, I must admit though, looking at it, it does look cool. You know, it's, it's a stubby little thing, even this rifle version. Um, I mean the carbine version, even shorter, uh, even more compact, um, you know. So I would like to have a look at one of these uh, in the um, walnut version. I think I've got a picture of it actually on uh, Air Arms' manual. We may as well have a look at this manual. I'm doing this video sort of all totally back to front, but hey ho, that's how it's rolling today. So. This is the manual, that is the walnut version. Doesn't that look pretty damn nice? Oh yeah, yeah, me likey. I like this one though. But um, let's have a look at the manual. I mean, real, real good manual. In fact, an excellent manual. Big, clear, in color, brilliant. Tells you how to cock the rifle, how to swap that out. Look, you can see it's dead easy, just swap it out onto the other side. I didn't do it, like I said, but I should have really. Um, and then that's your adjustment on your um, stock, on your butt pad. That's what I was talking about with the angle of it. That's a nice feature if you sort of shoot around corners. Um, but no, no, that, that will suit some people, you know, depending on how you, you shoot, you know, your build as well. Uh, real, real nice. Uh, didn't mention that, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. Uh, safety catch is cross bolt safety actually on the trigger. Oh, I'm just knocking my camera about. So that is uh, pretty cool. Uh, all right, I'm not usually a fan of safety catches actually on triggers, but yeah, that seems to work well. Um, so that's that. Uh, tells you how to obviously charge the rifle. Um, and then how to cock and load and fill your magazines up. Real good photographs, uh, really well explained as well. Um, bit of maintenance and exploded diagram there. So there's the guts um, and sort of all your parts list there. Uh, really, really well done, um, air arms. I say, it is, um, you know, like an internal baffle system on the uh, on the actual barrel of the rifle. But I just did find it a little bit noisy. There's the barrels there. You can see the guts of the at the baffles even. Um, I just did find it a little bit noisy, to be honest. Um, and there's the uh, trigger assembly there, exploded diagram, and all your parts list there. And there's your cylinder, real good detail. Attention to detail air arms, love it. And then even exploded diagram of this stock there, the wooden stock anyway. So I'm gonna say air arms, 10 points on the handbook. 
Full marks, love that. Now, what else do you get in the box? Um, spare magazines, so you get two magazines, you get your filler adapter and your Allen keys for all your required adjustments. Now, let's just tell you a few other features on this rifle and uh, we'll give it a trigger pull test. You know, usual sort of stuff here on rack and load. So this is something that I really, really like and I think this should be normal on a, a rifle on rifles these days is a little bubble level built in to the rail that is cool so that basically if you don't know um, helps you eliminate um, canting the rifle basically leaning it when you you sort of don't realize you're doing it quite often uh, when I've been shooting I don't realize that I'm actually canting the rifle to the one side and that can really make a difference on your shots. Um, obviously in an air rifle it will, but if, you know, if you're shooting something like a 308, you know, center fire or something, shooting it out to like six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand 900,000 yards, it can make a massive difference. So that is a cool feature, fitted as standard as well. Get it on camera. So that is brilliant. And while we talk about that, the rail, this has got a dovetail rail. Uh, you pretty much got to choose what you want um, with air arms. You can either have a dovetail or a weaver stroke Picatinny rail, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do like, I think it was the last video I did, well, one of the last videos I did. Uh, I think it was on the, was it on the Hercules? I think it was on the Hatsan Hercules, can't remember now. Uh, but they, they've got one of those rails where it's like a combination of a, of a weaver rail and a dovetail rail. Um, that is really cool. So you haven't got a, doesn't matter what sort of scope mount you've got, you, they'll, it'll just fit either way. You know, it's kind of like got the dovetail on the top of the rail and then it's also got the, uh, the weaver rail bit underneath as well. So that is cool. I mean, actually looking at it, I don't know whether it is, it probably isn't, but it almost looks, I don't know whether you guys will be able to see, if you look at the rail, it's almost like it's a, it's a weaver rail as well. I know it isn't, but it, it's got that shape. Um, but no, it's, it's definitely just the uh, the dovetail on that. But um, but yeah, really really cool though. But like I say, you've got to choose which what what you want. Whether you want just your sort of standard dovetail, or you want some to uh, like your weaver rail. It's it's totally up to you. But you've got to choose that first. That is one of the options that you do get. Um, with our arms, with the Galahad. But, oh guys, look at this. Just look at it. I love it. This thing is so well balanced. It literally is there when you shoot, when you bring it up to your shoulder. It, with me anyway, it, it is just there. Up in your shoulder and it's on point straight away. Straight away. Just a cracking, cracking little rifle. Right, let's give it a trigger pull test then. So let's cock this thing. So that's fully cocked. Get my trigger pull ready. Let's just set this up, see what this is pulling out. This is straight out of the box, so I have not done anything with it. So let's give it a pull. 2 pounds 14 ounces. Should we give it another one? Let's give it another one. A bit of consistency, let's see what it's doing. That is nice, straight out of the box. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Let's say yeah, two and a half pounds. That is a nice trigger. In fact, to be honest, I thought it was more than that. But two stage trigger, really nice. I, I really do love it. Very nice trigger, straight out of the box. You can't argue with that, guys, you really can't. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't touch that. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's bang on for me, that is. But yeah, guys, that is it. Pretty much uh, the Air Arms Galahad. This is the SR version. Um, I take it that stands for synthetic rifle. Um, what a cracking bit of kit this is. It really is. To date, this is my favorite bullpup PCP. Um, just love it. Um, 
it fits good, it's fully ambidextrous like I said. Uh, shot count, I didn't mention shot count, right then, shot count. <sighs> 2-2 version, um, 12 foot pounds is, oh, I'm going to put all this, all this in the details of the video. Um, now this is off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's 140 shots in 2-2, uh, 120, 130 in 177. Okay, that's your shot count on the 12 foot pounds version. Available in 177 and 2-2. I believe they do do one in... Uh, 25 as well, a yeah, high power version. Um, I've not got any data on that. Uh, I'll get hold of it, I'll put it in the uh, description of the video uh, for you guys. But yeah, like I said, that is it. That is the Air Arms Galahad SR. Um, the best, or should I say, I won't say the best, I'll say my favourite, Rack and Load's favourite bullpup rifle to date. Here. I just love the thing. I love the lines of it. I love, I love the the way you cock this rifle, and I think that is a major thing. There's no lever back this way where you've got to take your eye off the ball. Uh, fully ambidextrous where you can swap that out. Uh, I just love it. I mean, look at that. That is just, just brilliant, brilliant. Excuse me, guys. That was my phone going off then in the background. <laughs> I don't know who wants me when I'm doing a video, seriously. But guys, seriously, um, what a cracking rifle. Made in the UK as well. So I've got to give that a bit of a thumbs up. And we've got to we've got to sort of uh, rave about that a little bit. Anyway, guys, before I waffle on too much and really get you uh, make you bored, that is it. That is uh, your rack and load review of the Air Arms Galahad SR. Thanks for watching. It's rack and load. See ya.